Jesus Christ, our Lord, at your divine baptism in the Jordan River, you revealed that you are consubstantial with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Enlighten our minds and our hearts on this day of your great epiphany. Make us holy by the indwelling of your Spirit, and make us worthy to celebrate this festival of lights so that we may glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the one Father whose voice came from heaven, testifying to his beloved Son, and to the only begotten Son who is worshipped, whose light radiated upon the river, and who accepted baptism from John his forerunner and to the one Holy Spirit, who descended and appeared above the head of the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast, and all the days of our lives and forever. The earth rejoices in your epiphany, O Son of God, and the peoples and the nations shout for joy on this day of your baptism. You have dawned from the Father and have sanctified baptism for us. O Church of the nations, proclaim the glory of the Son of God, who became man and was baptized for your sake in the Jordan River, and cry out to him, Blessed are you, O Christ, O Word of God, you willingly emptied yourself and took the form of man. You gave us a pledge of life in the waters of baptism, making us holy and heirs of your kingdom. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to sanctify us through this great epiphany. Create a new heart within us, make us newborn children of your Father, and pour out forgiveness upon your flock that we may worship you, glorify your Father, and give thanks to your Holy Spirit now, all and forever.
O Christ, O Word of the Heavenly Father, you became man for our sake, and you were baptized in the Jordan River. You became the way and the door that leads us to the Father. Grant us your grace and your mercy and accept the fragrance of our incense that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Kaddishat, Hayalatono Kaddishat, have been truly blessed. All on earth be attentive. Waters have been sanctified. from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out from darkness, has shone within our hearts in order to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God upon the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every manner, but we are not constrained. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. 
always carrying about in our body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work within us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I have believed, therefore I have spoke. We also believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus shall raise us also along with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow unto the glory of God. Praise be to God Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. <laughs> From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, The next day John was there again with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And two disciples heard what he said, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned, and he saw them following him, and he said to them, What is it that you are looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Rabbi, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come, and you shall see. So they went and they saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who had heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother, Simon, and he told him, We have found the Messiah, which means the anointed. And when he brought him to Jesus, Jesus looked at him and he said, You are Simon, son of John, but you shall be called Kepha, which translated means Peter. 
This is the truth, peace be with you. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shone within our hearts in order to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God within the face of Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So last week, we considered this kind of transformation of the notion of happiness. And for many of you, talking to you over the week, um, many were surprised on how the very notion of happy has transformed in the last 200 years. So we're going to give you something else to ponder for this week on the notion of the words of contradiction, of opposite words, opposite things of consideration that we have in this epistle today. St. Paul has a whole listing. We suffer, you receive. We bear the marks and they carry the dying of Jesus within us, and it works life within you. And this contrast back and forth between light and darkness, between weakness and strength, St. Paul is contrasting in this letter that he's writing to the Corinthians. And when he speaks about this, he's comparing the first and second creation, the God who made all things, and the first words that we have of God recorded in Genesis is, let there be light. And so as light shone forth from the darkness, so also he creates that new light of the new creation within us, so that we may come to the knowledge of God's glory. And where do we find this glory of God? In the presence, the Shekinah, the Shekinah, which is God's presence, we say, and St. Paul says, within the face, the revelation of Christ. And then he says, but this gift that is given to us of this divine light, we have in earthen vessels. So when it says earthen vessels, think your terracotta flower pots. That's earthen vessel, baked dirt. And he says, we carry this treasure within something which is ultimately fragile. How many times we've planted things by just breaking the pot and then just taking it and being able to put it in the hole. So St. Paul is reminding us of this contrast of strength and weakness, that we are given the very power of God's transformation within us, but that we carry it still always within something which is fragile. And so we have these kind of contrasts and, in fact, even contradictions, that we may be plowed down, but we're not in despair, that we may be struck down, but we're not destroyed. And so it's a very beautiful vision and very apropos of this last year that we're living through. That the grace of God is a source of strength. It is always within fragility, but it is still the strength that's given within us. So St. Paul says in the following line after what we just quoted, for we have this treasure in earth and vessels so that the preeminence of God, the strength of the power of God, may be known to be the power of God and not from us. And this is a great importance because it's also the source of our strength. How many individuals find discouragement, even depression? Just recently we had in the newspaper talking about we have broken all records for opioid deaths in Maine over this last 12 months. And it's important to understand that that contrast that in many ways that when that strength is known to come from God by grace, and by our faith we know this, and our faith is the great resilience and the strength for us, and we should have great compassion on those who do not have faith, who do not see, and hence are so much more prone to being plunged into depression and despair because they have not received 
this power of God. Now the reason why I bring this up and what I want to leave you with today is what we call contronym. Now you know the word, perhaps not this specific word, but we all remember being tortured in grammar school. We learned synonyms, we learned homonyms, we learned these different grammatical terms. There is one called a contronym. And the contronym is a word which actually has two opposite meanings. One of the ones closest at hand is in Maine, we talk about something being very wicked to say that it's really super good. But of course, wicked in itself doesn't have that original meaning. The word cleave can mean to adhere to something. We cling to it, we cleave to it, but cleaving can also be breaking something. These are contronyms. They are words which, for various reasons, by constant use of the words, they've taken on two opposite meanings, in fact. The word down. The word down is a contronym, actually. Its original meaning is a hill, not the direction of moving along the hill down. It's why you have still in Kentucky, Churchill Downs. Churchill Downs are the hills area of the Kentucky region for the horse racing. So the contronym, the reason why I'm giving it to you is because you beautifully sang, and you have been singing over these last couple weeks, in the Kaddishat. Mishi ho detamed men yohanon. You who were baptized by John, have mercy on us. But the word for baptism, now in English we use the word baptism because we have it from the Latin, baptisma. And all the Latin church did was just take it directly from the Greeks, baptisma. And as I mentioned to you before, the word baptiz, baptizein, means to plunge something, like into water. But the Syriac church did not take the Greek word into its use. That's why you didn't say Mishicho de baptized de men Yohanam. You didn't take a Greek word. We have the word Amad. And Amad is also found in Hebrew. As we are not too surprising. They're related, they're cousins, these languages. But the word Amad in the Hebrew origin, in its Hebrew meaning, means to rise, to stand up. Now you'll notice the pun if you look in the Missal during the Husoyo, that today we celebrate your epiphany of your baptism, you who dawned from the Father. Because Amad, to baptize, Mamad, means to rise up in its one meaning. And so you see the pun in the word by saying, you who dawned, who rose from the Father, who dawned from the Father. As I mentioned to you, the whole word that we have in Syriac for the word for epiphany is denho, which can mean manifestation, but actually originally means rising, like the sun, like the dawn. So the word amad in its Hebrew meaning is to stand up or to stand firm. In Hebrew, the word amudan means actually a column, something which holds something up firm. But the word in the Syriac has taken on that contronymical meaning of actually the notion of diving. So on one hand, we have its meaning of rising or being brought up, being established, and the other is, is being to sink or to dive. So that literally it has taken on the one meaning of baptism, to be plunged, but its meaning as a contronym also just to rise up to dawn. When we see that in our Syriac tradition as being the meaning of baptism, it is doubly profound in its understanding because it doesn't just mean you get dunked in water. It also means you are raised up and established within that new life of Christ. And so it's a little technical, but I think it brings a beautiful nuance to how our faith has been expressed within this Syriac tradition. And so when we look at this, 
The very word, Mahamudito, is the word for baptism in Syriac. We're looking at its amodo, is another word for baptism. So the very notion of diving and being risen up. And we emphasize the aspect of not just simply sinking or diving, because the aspect of diving becomes a spiritual terminology for those who are on the quest of the fullness of the kingdom. There is a book you can find, it's been published just a number of years ago, it's called The Wisdom of the Pearl Divers. And what it is, it's an anthology of writings of the Syriac writers, Syriac fathers, to the pursuit of, they give the image. And again, it's one of these funny things of a religion that is out of the Mesopotamian, which isn't really near the ocean, as the great rivers Tigris and Euphrates, but that its image becomes nautical. If you recall on, on Palm Sunday, in the evening, we have the coming into the harbor, the whole ceremony that opens up the week of the passion. But we use the nautical term of coming in to the harbor. And so here, those who are seeking the kingdom of God in the Syriac tradition are known as divers. They dive for the pearl of great price. And of course, for those who lived along the coast, they understand pearl divers stripped down, if not naked, stripped down to the very minimum to swim deep, hold the breath. It's a very necessarily ascetic practice because it takes a lot of endurance to hold your breath for that amount of time. And so this has been picked up using amad, using this term for diving with baptism to use the term then for omudo. Omudo is then the diver. So having been, it's not English, but having been doved, you become established to become the diver to find the pearl of great price in your life by the light which is given to you. It's a very beautiful understanding of the spirituality of the gospel, of what it means to be received, to be transformed in order to move forward. So as I said, it's a contronym. It's a word which has a dual meaning to it. And when we understand that, these divers for the pearl of great price, we can understand when St. Paul then says in this epistle today that continually carrying, bearing, continually bearing within our body the dying of Jesus, that Christ asks us every day to bear those marks of crucifixion. When we understand that it is not discouraging, on the contrary, it is a great honor first because we find the knowledge of the glory of God within Jesus, within, on the face of Jesus, as St. Paul says. And then Jesus in turn asks those who have been established, those who have been doved, those who have been brought up now to carry the marks which are mine of my dying, so that in order in carrying those marks of my dying, as St. Paul says, the life of Jesus, his resurrection, his power, his glory, that the life of Jesus may be made also manifest within our own lives, within our own bodies. So in the midst of times which can be very dark, always remember this festival of lights as it's called in our prayers, that it is the source of the glory, the source of our perseverance, and the source of our encouragement while simultaneously, simultaneously also being the request from God to carry the marks of the dying of his son within us. A great honor, a great privilege, a great difficulty at times, but we know that it brings us to the glory of God and the knowledge of that glory. So praise be to God always for this gift that he has given to us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
believe in one God, the Father of all saints, the maker of Tell what my dead head are within your pews the sheets for the transfer hymn of the Epiphany. Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, our hope, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Anthony. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. 
Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. John the Apostle on page 815, 815. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. <coughs> Lord God and Father, you are true love, security that is ever sure, and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls, and with a holy kiss worthy of your blessed name, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. For your majesty, send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary, that we may glorify you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you sent your beloved Son at the appointed time for our salvation, and he gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries. Do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. <clears throat> the love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with 
Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord, of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. all things by your divine power. For our salvation you sent your Son into the world. He descended, became flesh, and suffered, and was crucified for us, who had distorted his image. Wabiyamo hao doktum hasho dilema bid haye. And sabe lachma bidao koni shoto upara hu kodesh. Waksu ya bilitar mi tao kodo maro. Sabe hula mene kulhul. Hono deni tao. Bahoro deal, Dahlo Faikun, Wachlov Sagiyen, Metakaseo, Meti Hel, Usoyon, Home Wahoy, Dan Alam Alamin. No alcohol, so dumsy for men, hamro, men, my yo. Barahu Kodesh. We are built on me, dog, Kodomara. Sabish Tower, Mehene, Kulhoon. Ho no, Denny Taho. Demoho, Dilla, Dia, Tiki, Hadato. Dahlo Faikun, Wachlov Sagi. Et a shadow meti hab. Hosoyon, Hame wa hoyen an alam alamin. Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this body and drink this blood. You proclaim my death until I come again. Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation, and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels, and all await the reward they deserve. And when you place the sheep to the right, and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household, and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart, and do not separate us from you. 
For we have professed your holy name and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, May these holy mysteries sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share them, cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever. O Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them, we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your church. We pray to you, O Lord. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, and for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and who profess that you are the true God, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented this offering upon the al this altar, and those who desired to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord <coughs> we remember all the saints, the fathers, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, and Saint Anthony, and all the righteous and the just, through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious blood and blood of your Son. They waned for you in your life-giving hope. Praise them upon the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
You are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving Son of Christ who offered yourself for your blood. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through the mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your blood and for you. To you be glory. O oh God the Father, you accept prayers and you answer petitions. You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and with clear consciences praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the Holy Spirit. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation, and from the all harm of evil, for you have power over all. We raise glory to you now and forever. Peace be with you. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life-giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, that with them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. <laughs> holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve in our weakness? And insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. Through your grace dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy give them life. By your luminous cross bless your people and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father, and to your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.